So let us gather a phalanx of twisted sorcerers and clanking automata. Let's talk about how to start a Thousand Suns army in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Thousand Suns, doing a start collecting video for the faction, with a few thoughts as to how to get an army off the ground from a standing start. We'll talk over why you might want to collect Thousand Suns, some ideas towards planning an army and buying 40k miniatures, a few ideas for first purchases and the combat patrol box for the Thousand Suns, and then move on to expanding an army and one competitive list. Loads to talk about for the Dusty Legions of Magnus, so let's jump straight into it. So first up, why would you want to collect a Thousand Sons army in Warhammer 40k? The Thousand Sons are one of the heretical traitor legions, dedicated to the worship of Zinch, and perhaps operate the most differently compared with any of the other Space Marine legions. Due to Zinch blessing them with too many mutations, a sorcerer called Araman turned the vast majority of their legion into dusty clanking automata, hollow armour animated by magic that follows the whims of their sorcerous masters. During the heresy, the Thousand Sons were forced into the arms of Chaos, Following the Emperor sending the Space Wolves out to burn down Prospero, following Magnus ruining the Webway project, and the Thousand Sons joining the ranks of the traitors for revenge. Aside from general themes of magic and mutation, they tend to be quite Egyptian themed in terms of their armour and styling, and currently the scheming sorcerers of the Thousand Sons like to concoct grand plans and great rituals to bring down their enemies and further their knowledge of forbidden lore. Models wise, they do have their standalone range in 40k. The range is quite small but quite nicely executed particularly things like their Sorcerers, Rubric Marines and Scarab Occult Terminators, I think are quite nice miniatures. On top of that, they have access to a fair few of the slightly older or more generic Chaos vehicles, things like Forge Fiends, Chaos Predators, Helldrakes and Chaos Spawn. A few of those kits are a bit more on the dated side, and also Games Workshop decided to increase their ranks with allying a bunch of Beastmen Zangles into the army, basically fancy bird Beastmen, representing their followers and acolytes. They're fun as additional options, but I don't think that they're generally things that tend to draw people to collect Thousand Sons, as they do feel like a bit of a slightly awkward port from the fantasy game, and are perhaps just a tiny bit jarring compared with the main aesthetic of the Thousand Sons. In game, the Thousand Sons tend to be an elite army with really quite a lot of clever psychic tricks. You're quite likely to be commanding relatively slow moving phalanxes of hard to kill warriors, backed up by a whole bunch of witchfire spells and some buffs and debuffs from your sorcerers. I must admit, compared with a lot of armies in 40k, they do tend to require a little bit more thinking on the tabletop to get the most out of them. With all the crazy psychic spells and options that they have, you really could achieve quite a lot, but sometimes it's hard to know what's the best thing to go for. The majority of their strategy will generally revolve around putting big buffs on some really tough units, casting a whole bunch of witch fires, and then dealing a bunch of damage with inferno bolters as well. For weaknesses, they can be a little bit slow outside of their movement tricks like warp time and teleporting, and perhaps compared with some armies that don't really have all that much long range firepower, a lot of their things want to get quite close. Currently in game I'd say that they're kind of medium to strong, Armour of Contempt held out their main strategy quite a bit, and they've had some rather nice improvements to Rubric Marines and a points cut to Magnus in recent days. Definitely an army that's currently capable of tangling with the scariest threats in the game. Finally price wise I would say that they're one of the relatively cheap armies to play 40k with, they might not have all that many discount options, but being very elite means you don't need all that many models on the tabletop, and being quite character heavy also helps out with that too. Before we quickly move on with these start collecting videos, I do quite like to mention options for buying 40k miniatures, as there are different things with different advantages and disadvantages. You can pick up Warhammer models directly from Games Workshop, generally this is probably the most reliable, but usually the most expensive way to do so. Typically I'll usually go through local gaming stores myself, there's a lot of sellers out there who sell Games Workshop stuff but cheaper, usually in the 10-20% kind of range. I've got a link to Element Games down below in the video description, that's one such seller based in the UK. You can certainly give a Google though for any suppliers in your local area, and they might save you a little bit over Games Workshop. There's also the second hand market, places like eBay and local selling groups, that might well be worth a look, often you can save a little bit on how much they cost to start with, and sometimes might be good for saving effort as well with putting together the models and getting together a tabletop ready army quickly. And as ever 3D printed armies are on the rise, lots of alternative sculpts exist for various Games Workshop things out there on the interwebs, and 3D printing can certainly be handy to get your hands on individual parts and upgrades, things like stylistic alternate heads or weapon options or things. Feel free to check out Element Games though if you are based in the UK, the link is down in the video description. 
Moving on to planning an army, there's all sorts of resources that you can use to educate yourselves further on the Thousand Sons. You could potentially think about picking up the codex early and having a read through. It's got lore miniature galleries and the current rules for most of the units. A good starting point to anchor yourself and the understanding of the army. For rules and army building, you could think about things like Battle Scribe, Warpedia, or the Warhammer app. They can all be good ways of messing around with lists and points costs and trying to put an army together. You can potentially try out armies before you buy with Tabletop Simulator or with proxy and models in game so you can get a feel of which units you might want to use before you actually take the plunge. And of course there's all sorts of content here on YouTube for the Thousand Sons. I made a fair few Thousand Sons ones including a fairly recent whole army overview and a few things before that including tier lists and discussion of their cults. Off YouTube it's well worth checking out social media, Thousand Sons Discord servers, subreddits or Facebook pages. Always a good resource if you did want to ask some basic questions to some current sorcerers collectors. Then when you're thinking about getting any collection off the ground, I'd start up with painting up a practice model to test out your colour scheme before you farm it out to an entire army. I think for Thousand Sons, I'd recommend starting out with something as basic as a simple rubric marine, pretty much the most iconic model of the army, and a good place to get all the basics down before you go farming it out onto even more complicated models. I must admit Thousand Sons and Chaos in general do tend to have really quite a lot of trim to pick out on the armour plates. Can just be a little bit daunting if you do want them to vaguely resemble the box art. Then when you're thinking about building up to a full 2000 point army, you could think about whether or not you're trying to theme your list to any particular set of lore or a game plan. I think just about for every Thousand Sons army it's usually going to be worth building around a core of Rubik Marines and or Scarab Occult Terminators. They are the units that just about everything else revolves around in terms of buffs and synergies. With somewhat limited options, I guess the biggest alternate build might be going heavy on things like Zangor, Spawn or Mutaliths. Go for a bit more of a weird and wonderful mutated freaks army. At the moment, this just isn't anywhere near as strong in-game as the core Thousand Suns choices. Though it could be fun if you just want to spread Zinch's many mutations far and wide. With the standard Rubik Marines or the Scarab Occult Terminators though, you could certainly go very heavy on either one or the other. I've seen lists where people take almost nothing but Rubik Marines and the same for the Terminators and you can add other interesting support elements into the army. For example, whether or not you want a firebase, say a bunch of Contempt of Dreadnoughts, chucking out firepower, or potentially going for a list that includes Magnus himself, which would give you a very different feel to the army just due to how many points he takes up. Whether you're going for something balanced or you're trying to skew to one of these many things, I generally think about drafting out a 2000 point army as a theoretical end goal, it doesn't matter if it changes a fair bit by the time that you actually get there and you've been getting more games under your belt and finding out what works, but I think it helps to anchor it in your mind for a rough goal as to where you might take the collection. Moving on, let's talk about first purchases for the army. If you're new to the faction, I think just about everyone will be wanting to pick up Codex Thousand Sons at some point. £32.50, $55 or €42.50 from Games Workshop. The Codex is around about a year old at time of recording and I wouldn't expect it to get updated until the next edition of 40k rolls around, so it should at least have some reasonable shelf life. Technically, if you want all the Thousand Suns rules, there is a supplement formation called the Warp Meld Pact in Warzone Nackman's Rift War, though to be honest, unless you are absolutely adamant that you want to fill tons and tons of Zangors, I think that you can pretty much skip this one out. Maybe that could be something for far, far further down the road if you wanted to put a different twist on the army at a later date, but certainly not something when you're starting out. On top of this, Games Workshop does supplement things with a bunch of digital rules. The balanced data slate adds Armour of Contempt, making all the armour for the Thousand Sons that little bit better. The points costs have been updated since the Codex, including a couple of nice buffs to things like Rubric Marines. And Games Workshop also has an FAQ for the Codex, resolving a couple of issues. I'll link to all of these documents down in the video description. In general though, the core Codex book is still broadly accurate. It's worth getting a good handle on that before you venture out to all the supplemental stuff. Otherwise, for first model wise, I'd certainly consider any units that particularly draw you to the faction or any really big cool models that you just want early on, plus any units that you think you're going to use in just about every game. I think it's pretty much worth starting out with some Rubik Marines and Sorcerers. They're almost certainly going to see a fair bunch of play, or you could consider Combat Patrol Thousand Sons as the discount kit for the faction. Looking a bit closer at Combat Patrol Thousand Sons, it's certainly worth being aware of, though I must admit it maybe isn't the most helpful Combat Patrol kit out of any of the discount options that Games Workshop sells. Like the others, at the moment it costs £90, $150 or €120. Euros. In it you get an Infernal Master, 5 Scarab Occult Terminators and 20 Zangors, 
plus a few of the 40k Zangor upgrade sprues. In terms of the actual models, the value comes to around about £118, so you get around about 25% discount on buying them separately. It's not nothing, but I must admit it's not stellar compared with other Combat Patrol boxes from Games Workshop. Technically, if you included the cost of the Zangor upgrade sprues, then it does look a bit better. But honestly, I don't really rate them all that much. It's just basically giving the Zangor some auto pistols, and I think that they're kind of hideously overcosted for what they are. Out of the units, I think that the Infernal Master is particularly interesting. It's quite a strong HQ choice and gives you some interesting options. Demonic packs as well as psychic powers. Plus the Combat Patrol box is the only way to get him. Then there's the Scarab Occult Terminators. They're really quite strong units. Really good targets for layered sorceress buffs. And the Infernal Combi Bolt of Fire can actually be genuinely very threatening if you have enough things amping them up. Really though, the dominating force in the box are basically two kits worth of Zangors. They're mutated Zinch cultists. And they're kind of a bit meh on the tabletop right now. Plus, as mentioned, I feel that they're not usually the thing that usually draws people to collect Thousand Suns, not compared with the actual Space Marines. I think it is pretty unfortunate that the box is really quite so heavy on them. And for me, it would make me really not tempted to pick up more than one box of this. I think if I were getting into Thousand Suns, I probably would pick up one copy of this set. I do like the Infernal Master. Scarab Accord Terminators are good. And then it does give you two units of Chaff Zangors that could be used just to fill out the army though you might well want to replace them later on if you do get a really big collection there. I feel like it is one of the more underwhelming combat patrol sets though. The discount's not as big as some of the ones for other factions, and maybe a starting point that I'd weigh it up against would be that box with a trio of sorcerers, plus a terminator and a rubic marine unit. Those three combined would cost you £106, but they would get you far more points on the table than this box would, and they're all more optimal picks than Zangles are right now. Realistically, if you are building your way up towards a 2,000 point army, I'd say this box, plus the ones that I just mentioned, might be okay. Add this to a couple of squads of Rubik Marines, those Sorcerers, and another set of Scarab Occult, and you've got yourself quite a balanced Thousand Suns army to start with. So once you've got a core established, what ways could you use to expand a Thousand Suns army and get it up to something like a 2,000 point list? In general, from this core, I'd be adding more central and more big hitting damage dealer units, I think you'd want a hefty core of the Rubik Marines and the Scarab Occult Terminators at the centre. You could think about adding some Rubik Marines with Warp Flamers if you already have a fair few with the Bolters. They could have a very different feel and be delivered by Deep Strike for some heavy damage. And then Thousand Suns armies generally want to go at least fairly heavy on characters leading them. That box of three sorcerers is great value. Other good choices are things like Araman, the Demon Prince and the Infernal Master from that Combat Patrol box. I think Spawn are another very interesting unit for the Thousand Suns as well. They're cheap, fast and expendable, and they do hit fairly hard. They work particularly well getting that 4 plus Imbul save power off on them, and they can be an annoying threat to remove and bully enemy light infantry pretty effectively. Finally, I think having some grunts on the table isn't the worst thing in the world. Units for doing some screening and actions and objectives. I'd say probably Cultists and Zangor Enlightened are maybe a little bit more optimal for that role at time of recording. Though the standard Zangors aren't really all that far behind. Otherwise, as mentioned, you could add at some fire support elements or some big tanks and demon engines. Thousand Suns do seem to like doing damage at somewhere around 18 to 24 inch range, so having a few longer range things isn't the worst idea. Some lists like to take some Forge Fiends or Hell Brutes along within the Codex, but otherwise, some Forge World options could be interesting. Chaos Contempt to Dreadnoughts with their rules and the Imperial Armor Compendium are pretty interesting. Plus Games Workshop should have that multi-part one for Horus Heresy coming out sometime soon. And another option could be an allied super heavy auxiliary for a trio of Chaos War Dogs. Maybe something like the ones with the auto cannons. I've seen a couple of Thousand Suns lists using those. Finally, I think a lot of people will be tempted to pick up the Primarch himself, Magnus the Red, as he is pretty much the leader of the faction. Really quite a cool model, though I still think just a little bit on the questionable side for totally optimised lists. His main issue being that he just costs a whole load of points. It's a bit hard to hide as he breaks obscuring terrain, and if your opponent just manages to target him with loads of long-range firepower, then you could be potentially losing a huge chunk of your list pretty early in the game for not all that much expended effort on the opponent's part. If you can keep him alive, casting powers and doing melee all game long though, then you'll get good value out of him. Finally to round up, here's just one example of a current strong Thousand Suns army list. This was a 2000 point force taken from Best Coast Pairings, run by a gentleman called Tim Nordin, who appears to have used it to take second at an event called Summer is Coming GT. As I mentioned, Thousand Suns can be an army where you've got a lot of options in-game, 
and certainly someone who can think through all their various options and play them optimally is going to do far better than someone who's a bit more new. But just looking at lists do give you a decent idea as to what sort of things work well. This list is made of a single thousand sons battalion. Typically a single battalion detachment works pretty well for most lists and it uses the Cult of Duplicity, the one that allows you to use that spell to teleport units around the board, which is a massive mobility buff. The list is led by Araman, who's got Glamour of Zinch, Presage and Weaver of Fates, so it's very much set up in a buffing capacity there, and he can get those buffs where he needs to go, jumping around the board on a disc of Zinch. Then there's a more damage dealer set up Sorcerer, an Exalted Sorcerer with the Athenaean Scrolls Relic for some more reliable casting. He takes Zinch's Firestorm and Doombolt, and he also has the Rahati upgrade as well, which means he could smite as well, giving him a dizzy amount of mortal wounds. There's then an Infernal Master. He's got Empiric Guidance for generating you rerolls, and also takes the Duplicity Warlord trait Master Misinformator, the one that allows you to redeploy units pre-game, and potentially get them in either good positions for Alpha Strike, or keep them safe if you go second. He also has the Umbralific Crystal, another way to teleport scary units round the board. The teleporting tricks could work well on a fair few different units here. In the troop slot we've got three units of Rubric Marines, two with Bolters and the Icon of Flame, and one big unit of nine with Warp Flamers, who take Pyric Flux and the Protege upgrade for some extra damage out of those Flamers. They're a good choice for teleporting or using that crystal on. There's then a unit of ten Cultists, which would be nice for grunt work, and then two enormous bricks of Scarabagult Terminators, two blocks of ten of them, each with two Soul Reapers and two Hellfire Missile Racks, one squad takes Cacodemonic Curse and one Twist of Fates to remove some invuls. One of the aspiring sorcerers also has Ardent Automata, the one that allows you to heal a model at the start of each turn. Finally, there's three units of Chaos Spawn, two relatively large bricks of five of them, and one single unit of one. Fairly cheap and expendable, and can still bully Space Marines or Medium Infantry quite well. Overall, a very decent amount to object to secure tough bodies, a bunch of mortal wounds coming out, particularly out of that Exalted Sorcerer. Redeployment and deep strike shenanigans, ensuring that you hopefully get the alpha strike with a bunch of units, and actually quite a serious amount of firepower coming out of those Scarabacult Terminators, particularly when buffed with Presage and Araman's rerolls. Overall, a very solid looking list, and a pretty great example of what makes Thousand Suns strong at the moment. So I think we'll leave that there for this video. Let me know your thoughts on getting a Thousand Suns collection off the ground down in the comments below. As always, I look forward to hearing any advice from seasoned sorceress generals. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I'm sure we'll have more for the Thousand Suns in the future. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description if you're interested. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.